throughout the 409 precinct. Um, we're looking for volunteers, so you can call our office. Uh, I'll give you the phone number. Uh, it is 718-409-0109. Um, and also, we've set a date for our Bronx Day in Albany event. It will be May 1st. Uh, we are not taking reservations yet, but uh, starting around April 10th, we'll start taking reservations. Um, in light of what Jeremy had just mentioned about Palm Parkway, uh, we had sent some pictures over from constituent complaints about Palm Parkway South. Uh, so we will be keeping an eye on the situation going on as well with Palm Parkway North, just to make sure that you know everything stays steady and smooth. Uh, but that's, I think, all I have for tonight. Thank you. Uh, Al? I just want to thank the council. I know he was very active in uh, the snow uh, December. Um, not very active in the uh, uh, trying to help us with the snow removal. Um, you know, he called to me. You know, he got it done. And one of the uh, one of the major complaints was that the causeways on most of the streets in Morris Park were not done. You know, the, the streets were done. The, the corners. Uh, if you're a senior citizen, you were, you were on one block for about a week because there's no way for you to cross the streets. Uh, yes, yeah. the corners were just uh, yep. just for that. But I, you know, I want to thank him for, uh, 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 for reaching out to people and asking here. for uh, mm -hmm. you know for any information about streets right. that needed to be Rafa, worked on. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, with you. Yeah, I'm doing kind of my thing. Nope. Thank you. We're not kind of the like official uh, portion. Yes. We'll move on to the chairman's report. Tony. <laughs> Uh, I kind of said what I had to say about the Postal Service. Uh, I'm going to follow up on that. I want to probably attend your meeting. Okay, uh, the mailbox, I'll say this here, uh, I had a problem. I was a victim of the group, okay, twice. And uh, they changed the mailbox to where I live. They put the slits in now. There was another one on Waring, I think on Waring and Mace. I mean, Westbelt Mace. They removed that box. Subsequently, it has been replaced with a lift. So they're in the process of picking them up, no, redoing them, putting them out. Uh, no, Parkway North, I got the bad news that they gave the BBC, gave the contract to the same guy who did Pelham Parkway South. That's distressful. That's distressful. Yes, I'm a human shame. I, I, I can't understand that. that. That that they did lousy work. The whole street on the south beats have been redone. Follow I saw the some money. pictures recently. It's unbelievable. How the hell could they? Excuse my language. How could they award that contract to them? Follow well, the maybe money. Maybe they donate to somebody's campaign. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, it, it's disgraceful. Disgraceful. Now, I'm going to nag the controller's office. I'm going to nag our councilman. Something's got to be bad. They, they shouldn't get it. They don't deserve it, period. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah, that I know. That I know. Another thing on attendance, committee attendance. It's awful. Awful, okay? Uh, we're going to reevaluate. I mean, I, I, I tell you, I, maybe I was a little too sore. Uh, they're people we don't see. We don't see them. Mm -hmm. And maybe we are going to submit letters to these people and attempt to remove them from the board. I, 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 you got to be a hard guy because if you're a nice guy, they walk over you. They don't come to the committee meetings. All right? And I'm going to, I'm going to have a meeting with my executive committee probably next week, and that's going to be the topic. And I'm probably going to reassign people in these committees. Okay? Now, a lot of you people, here or not here, they, you know, they have problems. So the best thing to do, if you have a problem coming to these meetings and you can't do it, please submit your resignation. So a BP could assign people that want to come on. I'm sure they have a big list of people that want to come on. So please, if you can't make it, I ain't going to get mad. Nobody's going to get mad. Let's be, just be honest. I mean, you, you, may, you may come to one meeting a month, mm -hmm. but we have committees. Mm -hmm. And these, uh, the education committees, uh, I feel sorry for her. She's trying, but nobody comes. Mm -hmm. And there's other committees like that. So we're going to meet next week, we're going to redo the committees, and we're going to start keeping attendance. Mm -hmm. And if I feel a lettuce deserved, you're going to get it. 
Okay? I don't care who you are. That's that. Now, motion to a motion to I, I make a motion to approve February 27th board, full board minutes. Second by Al. Open for discussion. All in favor? Aye. Second. Uh, abstain. Against. Submitted. Now I, I give the speak. Uh, I give it over to the treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The treasurer's report has been distributed. If there are any questions, please see me after the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. So I'll move on to my report. So as Sandy pointed out, I um, forgot to change the health committee meeting on the calendar. It is going to be moved from the 11th to the 6th at 6 p.m. We will make that correction tomorrow, but for those of you who are concerned about the Christian holidays, we did put those on the calendar, and Chris and I went through, made sure we got it for the entire year, as well as uh, the Hindu holidays and anything else we might have forgot. Uh, Marcy? I work in New Jersey, so getting there at 6 o'clock is going to be hard. Well, if this month is no other day, we can do it because it's canceled. Well, I know, yeah, I can't hold so maybe you could talk about it after the meeting or tomorrow or something, and if there's an issue, we can change it. It's, we have this all the time, meetings. Any reason why your district service is changed to Friday? Yeah, I was getting to that. So uh, so Tony and I were discussing, um, you know, it's one of the reasons maybe why I forgot about moving health is because after the leadership committee meeting on Monday, this, this week I was focused on preparing for my district service cabinet meeting on Wednesday. And then the full bar on Thursday is just a little too cumbersome, so I'm gonna make a permanent change. To have it all, I, I waited till my district service cabinet meeting yesterday to ask the, the cabinet members what makes sense for them, but I want it the week before the full board meeting. So that way, not only am I better prepared, and I want to make sure I can give you any answers with any questions, complaints you might have to so have that at a full board meeting. So it's going to be the week before, and as of right now, it's going to be Friday, every month going forward. So thank you for asking about that. And as you also um, are reminded, we have WNET recording the meetings. I've asked them for a list of the community boards that they have uh, reported. I know they, were, they went to Queen Board 2, Queen Board 4, Brooklyn Board 1 and others, and I will send you that list for anyone who's interested to see how maybe some of the other boards are operating. And then I had a question or a concern from a board member about, um, there's a there's a street light being installed at Wallace and Morris Park Avenue, and they wanted to know how that came about. Did they come to us? It's been the Transportation Committee policy for a while now that any um, any request that the DOT can easily just review, we kick to them automatically. And we leave it up to the agency to determine whether or not a traffic calming device, like a stop sign or a stoplight, goes into that location. And that's what happened here with Wallace Avenue. Wallace and what? And then um, we got various complaints oh, about potholes, sinkholes. We got one repaired on Pelham Parkway, right? front of White Plains Road, that's going westbound. I know a board member complained to us about East Chester Road. They did fill the potholes, but they weren't exactly the great, the greatest job uh, completed. I've also been informed by the city's information technology telecommunications department huh. that they're going to be upgrading all um, of New York City.gov. They've done a lot of it. They have not done our website yet. I don't know if anyone's looked at the general New York City website. It's no longer www.nyc.gov. Oh, God. It's www.1.nyc.gov. Oh, jeez. There's a new format Every that they gave me examples that we can choose which particular style. It's just um, another I can send a list of the boards that they've already upgraded, which is Bronze Board 1, Bronze Board 7, mm -hmm. Board 7, and others. I can send you that list, but if you would like to give me some feedback, I would say I told do it because they called me about this today. I said that I would try to give them an answer by next Friday. Not, not tomorrow, but next week. So if you can give me, I will send something out tomorrow. I'll give you a week if you want to respond with a suggestion. I appreciate it. 
Marcy? If you call me tomorrow, I'll give you my manager to do it. You can talk to them. Okay. Thank you. So am I fe February district service captain, me, and I forgot to mention this last month. So the DEP, um, my DEP contact said that her agency will be conducting boring samples for DEP green infrastructure projects. So they're going around, they're sampling the dirt. Doesn't mean they're going to put in a bio swale, if you're not familiar with that. Um, we had a presentation once upon a time about that at the leadership committee meeting. It's to take in the rainwater into the dirt, not always into the sewer, where if there's too much water going into the sewer, it overflows and goes out into the free, uh, the natural bodies. So it's a form of pollution. So they'll be conducting boring samples. Prior to um, installation, they're gonna notify property owners and property owners are allowed to opt out of installation. At least that's what we're being told. We'll see how it actually play, comes into play. Uh, but they're gonna be notified. And even after, say, say you're notified, you're a property owner, you're okay with it. After the fact, and if you think it's caused more problems than good, then they're supposedly going to uh, do away with that. You can opt out then. Obviously, it's much harder to do if, if you opt out after versus before. And then at the district service cabinet meeting What's yesterday, my department of health contact said that si the city plans on creating a citywide mental health advisory committee, <coughs> which will meet at a different location quarterly. So it's going to move around to the different boroughs. Ideally, they would like a representative from every community board. So if there's anybody who's interested, please let me know. I'm just supposed to get something in writing from my DOH MH contact. And then also at uh, my district service cabinet meeting yesterday, my DEP contact said that they are still doing these rain barrel giveaways, which I know Assembly Member Jonai's office has done one already at PS83. Uh, Klein's office has also done, done one. So, are, is everybody familiar with rain barrels? For These are for private homeowners that want to collect and use the natural um, resource as rain. They'll give up to, at an event, up to 100 rain barrels. They want, if you want to, like if you're the Morris Park Community Association, Band S Neighbor Alliance, you want to co-sponsor co an event, they're going to want you to keep track of the sign-in sheet. They're also going to want you to secure a location where you can store these it doesn't have to be 100, it could be 50, it could be 25 rain barrels. But they want, they're gonna to have to wanna to store these the day before. And the idea is to give them to property owners, not uh, not tenants, um, property owners. And these rain barrels cost on average $100 or more dollars to go somewhere like Home Depot. But it's a free program. If anyone's interested, please let me know. And then uh, I got, I did get a complaint about um, an unpermitted sign for a Bronx, for a bingo hall. You know, signs in general for the city tend not to have permits. It's an unusual problem. Uh, so this particular instance, the Bronxdale bingo was issued a violation. There is going to be a court date. My oh, department buildings contact is going to let me know when the court date is, so difference. I can follow up uh, on the way forward. I have spoken to the owner of the bingo hall. And they said they're looking into a more or something like that to rectify the situation. In terms of an issue I brought up last uh, last month, which Joe Thompson and I personally inspected about a, a church with quite a lot of music, I did reach out to Mr. Keith Thompson. I have not heard from him yet about setting up a meeting with the complainant. And then at the last education committee, which Diane will probably mention during her report, we had a scheduled a guest from the DOE who did not come. I have spoken to the mayor's office about that. I did speak to the liaison who's going to come hopefully in April and address some of these vague responses to our budget priority requests for education. I also spoke to the public library about that um, uh, budget priority request and the city's response, which made no sense. And I got two more things I will uh, leave you with, and then I think I'll turn it over uh, to the committee reports. So next door, we've had a hair salon, right? We have the keys there for some board members who needed the, the keys for a committee meeting. Mm -hmm. We've been having a problem in terms of uh, smoking. So if, if you come into the office, it's been better now. We had our landlord seal up the side. If you came and it smelled like smoke, 
It's largely because of the place next door, which I, when I spoke to my landlord about it, he said, do what you gotta do. So I'm intent on issuing or getting violations issued. I know I had a personal problem with it. I know uh, Chris had a personal problem with it. So if you have a personal problem, let me know. I'll add it to the list of complaints. And last but not least, Con Ed, Project One. If you didn't see the email, they're starting north of Morris Park Avenue, Lighting, south of Lighting Avenue area. They're doing the gas main work there. Oh, have, any other qu have, have any questions besides the ones I already asked? Please see me after the meeting. Thank you. Uh, committee reports. Start with uh, the committees that have motions to be voted on. Uh, Transportation Committee, Fernando Zagreta. Okay, uh, we have two motions. Uh, one is a motion to send the New York City Taxi and Limousine Commission an email of no objection regarding Community Car Service Corporation renewal license for livery phase operation at 1322 East Dunhill Road. Basically, there was a request that we check also with the Community Board 12 because they serve both 11 and 12 to make sure that there was no issue. And Chris, did you do that? Yes, both of them, they have no Any complaints from the 47th precinct? None whatsoever. Okay, therefore I make a motion that uh, we send a letter of no objection. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any objection? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The second motion has uh, three black parties, and I'll go through each one of them. The, fir the first one is the fourth annual Hello Summer. Tony, I'll, I'll make a selection. Hello Summer uh, Black Party. This is on 617 from 12 p.m. to 7.30. And this uh, is on Barnes Avenue between Allerton Avenue and Arno Avenue. The second one is uh, Waits Halloween Block Party. This is new. This is on 1028 from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And this is on Allenville Avenue between Waits Place and Felon Parkway North. The third one is the 6th Avenue Waits Place Block Party on 715 from 12 p.m. to 730 on Allenville Avenue between Fallon yes, Parkway North and Waits Place. There was, on our meeting, we voted on the fourth one, but it was uh, withdrawn, therefore it's not on this one. Therefore, I make a motion that uh, we approve, send a recommendation of approval for these street activity <coughs> permits. Any second? Second. Discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. Thank you. Question with a stand. Go ahead. Sure. All right, uh, Al D'Angelo, Leadership Committee. No, 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 there was a question. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we vote? Um, <clears throat> I know on this day there was supposed to be a discussion on White Plains Road. I didn't see it in the minutes what went on at that meeting. But all, I couldn't make it because I have a court prior court date up here. Basically, it was a presentation uh, and there was no vote taken. So, Marcy, not Marcy, I'm sorry. Bernadette was there. Uh, they made a presentation. There's a, I guess, a recommendation to allow for a left turn, I believe, signal. So um, it was discussed, uh, but no motions were made in reference to any of the discussion. As I would understand, they were supposed to come up with some kind of um, arrangement, what will happen. So, so the, the basically the arrangement is they're going to try to, DOT is going to try to accommodate ComEd and what they're looking to do for that intersection. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right, Chris was at the meeting too. Right, Chris? Well, so far they're going to deal with new segments on the, on the floor, meaning that they're going to keep it as it is. So my understanding is that what they're going to do, they're going to keep the signage on the floor 
And after that, they're going to see with the floor. Once um, they're going to see that everything goes fine, then they're going to leave it like it is. If they see that they're having problems, then they're going to come again and review it. And Bernadette, she agreed with everything that they accept. The, re the review process is it's not going to be like three month type of thing. No. It's got, they, they wanted a year. We said a year is too much. We said you got to take into account most of the seasons, including when students are in school, so I recommended nine months at the most, and they said that should be doable. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the leadership committee met, and uh, we went over the agenda, and we approved the calendar for uh, April. The only change in the calendar you have will be the 11th, which would be the social and social uh, the social service um, committee will be meeting on the 6th instead of the 11th. Um, and that time may change depending on what Marcy, you know, can, uh, Marcy can make it or not. So I need a motion to approve the uh, calendar. I have a, uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Carry, thank you. Um, economic development, Veronica Castro. Um, we didn't meet this month, but our next meeting will be April 6th. Uh, Dr. Patel? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have, it, I have the order a little bit wrong, but either way, Dr. Patel, please. We had provided the mayor's response to our request for budget priority items. I hope that the members and the community people at large had the chance to review this report and we are waiting anxiously to have input or response that you would like us to deliver to the mayor's office. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Patel. Education, culture, Diane Norris. Good evening, everyone. Um, we did have a meeting, however, our guests did not show up. Our education liaison did not show, but we were able to, dis and we did not have a quorum, but we were able to discuss a few matters. One of the matters that we were able to do, we were able to review the budget priority list, and we made some notations as far as the education, we, there's just zero in on education. Uh, we had some notations out there that was not clarified, and to us it was acceptable, acceptable, some of the explanations that we gave and we ask for further um, feedback on that. Also, Bernadette brought up the need in our community to have a community center. And I kind of agree with her because if you look at other boroughs that have beacon programs mm -hmm. and all these other things that are going on, even where my son is concerned, they got free camps, compass camps and things like that that you don't even pay for. And they're real camps. They go all the way, all the way up to New Jersey almost. And we, we need something for our youth in this community, um, in this community. And also, um, Purdom, I always get his name, his name mixed up. He brought up reestablishing the PAL program for the youth. And that's something also we should look into. So that's all, that was a number of our discussions. Uh, Linda, do you have anything you want to say? She's in charge of the youth, but that's what we discussed at our meeting, and I'm just, I just would like to say to the youth committee members, please come out. Because when we have guests, it looks bad when there's only two or three of us sitting there. We need a quorum if we want to vote, if we want to decide on any issues that's important. So I do need your help. Please come out. Our next meeting, we have our meetings for education the first Tuesday of the month. So I believe the next one will be April 4th. So come out. We have someone represented from the library. And also, as Jeremy said, we're going to try to get that education liaison here again. And we're just going to just keep plugging away and working on the issues. So please, I do need your help.
Yeah, um, sorry, I, got, and I told someone else earlier, it was the second Tuesday for some reason, that's how. Thank you for correcting me on that. Um, I did I didn't want to really mention this publicly, but just keep a tentative date maybe for the Yankee um, award distribution, community board 11 days in the stadium, maybe the 20th. It's not set in stone. It's 90% sure that June 20th for the organizations that want to distribute tickets. But that looks like maybe what we're looking at. It's not set in stone though. So I'll get back to you with something more concrete. Yeah, I think so. Um, health and Social Services, Joe Pico. Good evening. Uh, we did not meet uh, this month because of in climate weather, but we will meet in April and continue to work on our health fair. Now, we scheduled to meet on the 6th of April. I'm thinking that I'll talk to Tony and to Jeremy. We probably will meet on the 6th, but meet at 7 o'clock, probably at a different site. We will look for another meeting place. Then some of us can't make it because I'm on also the economic committee. So maybe we could try a different day at a different site? Okay, the six is bad for Sandy? Yes. The six is a bad day? Well, because I also have the economic committee and I do a lot of reviewing and it's meeting. So if you change it to another, if you, if you would change it to seven o'clock, I can't divide myself between six o'clock is fine. We'll get back to the board on what we will do. Economic committee, Veronica, do you have anything up? Uh, Chris, is there anything coming up on the uh, vote on the? Yeah, we're five. Yeah, there there is. Okay. Okay. Five. okay. All right. That's why. Okay. I'll, I'll have yeah, I don't know. But Tony, don't the association yeah. go on Tuesday? Anybody going there on Tuesday? Well, that, let us check to see if Tuesday is free at the association. You can have the meeting at the association at 7 o'clock on, uh, on Tuesday the 4th, if, uh, if that's okay with you. Where is the association? The Morris Park. It's right at the Morris Park Association. It's on Rock Street, Rock Street, Rock Street, Rock Street. It's about four blocks away from the community uh, board. I will be. Okay. I mean, that's okay. It's just an option. Ah, right, uh, we will we'll check we'll into that. Check okay. And see if we're all, if we have to we appreciate that. Thank you. But, but something to think about too, which we've spoken about before, Joe, and now is, is for your committee. I think you brought it up too. Is for your committee to maybe meet at a different um, healthcare facility. Yes. So if you have any in particular in mind, you haven't maybe gone to some of the members haven't gone to maybe at like Center White, the old Bed Aid. Um, that's something we can also help and arrange. Because I know the I don't, I don't want to steal his thunder, but I you know we did arrange for. The public safety committee to meet at it. They met at the precinct not this this month, but the month before, and they're going to meet at um, the EF, EMS station in Jacoby. It's coming up. So, okay, I'll talk to you about that. Okay, we will. Thank uh, you. How, thank, thank you, Joe. Housing, Janice Walcott. No. Miss Janice. Uh, she's Hi. Good evening. Uh, we didn't have much of a meeting. There were three of us there, but um, there wasn't too much that we discussed at this housing meeting. Hopefully, we'll have the HPD manager at our next meeting next week. Okay? Thank you. Joe McMahon, slide use. Good evening. Uh, we did not have a meeting this week. But uh, because the uh, minutes were very extensive last month, the minutes was, and it's in your package right now from February. Uh, we do have a few projects going on in Mosque on Amethyst Street and 500, 508 Van Ness Avenue. The BSA has issued some information that they need before they can go forward with that. And we do have the uh, ULARP with the Blondell Commons. But, uh, that's that. But on Monday, uh, March 20th, I did go to the public hearing for the Baychester Square project. 
And uh, since we, they say there will be no traffic, we kind of, I kind of disagree with them. And I asked them if, if they could somehow uh, cut off that exit on Stillwell Avenue of the southbound Hutchison River Parkway because those people come into that neighborhood and there's about nine nursing homes in that neighborhood and there's plenty of older citizens in there. And then uh, we were talking, I uh, happened That's to mention dumb, about, dumb. and I spoke about this twice, the uh, senior housing. Not really. The most yeah. money you can make. Park park right up to, no, it's a mess there. Yeah. In that senior housing, which what was 60% of, uh, of the AMI, it was $46,000 for a two bedroom apartment. I tried to mention to the people, if you want to keep middle class people in the Bronx, a school teacher and a bus driver can't live there because they make too much money when they retire. So it didn't make any sense to me. Somebody said, well, if you know they're using public money, they have to use, you know, for low income. I said, rich people and middle income people pay taxes too. I think they should be given the opportunity to live in their neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Somebody like me or people, you know, getting a little bit older, they want to get rid of their house and they would love to move into some sort of uh, place that they take out the garbage, they sweep the sidewalks, they shovel the snow. So, I mean, I, it might might have went on deaf ears, but I mean, they're, they're promoting retail. Mm. I watch CNBC every day, at least for the last 10 years, oh, at least a few times a week. JC Penney is closing 200 stores. Macy's. Macy's, Sears, The Gap, and Coles are in deep doo-doo because people know about Amazon. The people, brick and mortar stores are not, are not in vogue anymore. People want to go online. I get all kinds of stuff delivered right to my house. So I'd rather, I, I just mentioned that. I mean, I'd rather either, either see more housing, maybe some senior housing, with a higher AMI, but um, you know, it's not up to me, it's up to the developers, they're just looking to make money, you know, but I would not like to see, a, a, you know, stores there and uh, not to be filled in with, you know, with tenants. So uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the whole meeting was fairly run well, except in my opinion, I think community board 11 was shut out of it. Anytime I had a project, especially that project down on Blondell, I made sure Community Board 10 was involved because that's the border. On one side of the street is 11, the other side of the street is 10. So I think um, it, uh, it was a decent meeting and I, I did not say I was for the project or against the project. I just laid out some of those suggestions and um, We'll see what happens. So uh, that's the strength of my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. You got to change the batteries. Even though WNDT is recording it, we want to have our own recording. Unfortunately, the batteries go while this is recording and dies, and we lose all recording. And say while we wait that I know you brought up an issue about interns at the one of the last leadership committee meetings. I brought this up at our district service cabinet meeting. How Chris called, contacted. Yeah, you, yeah, you brought up the two leadership committee meetings ago. I just want to update the board that. Um, Richmond, Council Member Torres' office is going to help us with that because they have a great relationship with Fordham University. So we'll see. We did make, Chris did make mention of how we called that guy that you supplied us with and you know, All right, go ahead, Arlene, sorry. Sorry, now you're on. You sure? Okay. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Parts Committee met um, last month. It was a very brief meeting, but we had a guest speaker. His name was uh, Mr. Rakim Taylor, and he's in charge of um, maintenance and operations for the um, parks in this area. <coughs> we um, asked him several questions about the maintenance of the park, especially in Bronx Park, 